gang, it's another beautiful day here at Lund MX. Out here working in the shop, garage, whatever. Doing uh, work on uh, 2005 YZ450. This thing um, kind of kicked the chain. Chain came off, punched the case, knocked a hole in the case. So, got to replace the case, got to replace everything. I mean, we're going in it, so might as well just do bearings, crank, piston, everything. Gaskets make it a brand new engine all over again. And i uh, going to take you guys on this journey. If you have a 2005, um, it was a four-speed uh, transmission. And it was kind of an awesome bike for a lot of, like, super cross applications. A lot of people dug it for trails, too, because the close ratio transmission made it kind of fun. Uh, to do hill climbs and then a quick drop and then over a rock and stuff like that. But the five valve heads were subject to a lot of heat that the uh, 06 and and basically to like 2009, I think. You know, the five valve heads just, they generate a lot of heat. But if you kept the oil changed often, then they're very reliable bikes and they were very fast too. With great throttle response, lots of torque. So anyway, look at that thing. But doing motors, man, let's get it done. So this is where the business went down. You know, obviously, your counter shaft sprocket goes on here. And um, I don't know if he just didn't have the case protector on, the case saver they call it, right there. But for whatever reason, it kicked the chain and it knocked, I mean, it fully. It broke the whole clutch. This is your clutch lever. Clutch cable comes down right here hooks onto the clutch lever and then it um, so this whole thing right now is just every time you start it it just dumps oil out of that hole so I ordered a new case and all the parts for inside this thing and we are gonna get busy alright well first things first gotta pull the tank obviously the seat rear fender I'm gonna pull it because it's all jacked up um, and I'm gonna replace it um, the exhaust, um, you want to disconnect all your hoses, lines, cables, um, you don't have to do the throttle cable. On these, it's better to loosen the rear subframe bolt, leave the top one in, and after you got the exhaust off, you can just disconnect the carburetor at the, uh, head, and then pull the carburetor back, and they'll be all, it's, pretty flexible in here you pull the carburetor back and you just swing your subframe up and um, it'll pull the carburetor back far enough away from the head obviously you're not gonna get your subframe all the way up here I'm just saying you pull it and lift it back here and it will suck the carburetor away from the head pull your valve cover off um, your upper motor mounts and um, then all the all the other motor mounts now Maybe you're just doing a top end. You're not doing full engine case change like I am because of that thing right there. But it's up to you. Uh, this, I'll show you at least how you can do the top end from here um, inside the bike. I prefer to pull the top end out before pulling the bottom end out. It, I feel it makes it easier if you leave the top end on. There's not a lot of room in these old steel frame bikes to pull that whole motor out. Um... I find it easier to take off the whole top end, then take out your subframe bolt, or not subframe, but your swing arm bolt, and then, you know, push this, the bolt through, pull your swing arm back just a little bit, and that bottom end, like, pulls out with little to no effort whatsoever. So first, I'm going to get started by dropping all the oils. Uh, the, there probably shouldn't be too much left, but there, I have to drop the engine case oil, drain the coolant, and then... Uh, start uh, pulling that thing down so a little bit of time lapse okay well, I'm going to change it up actually a little bit. I am going to pull the carburetor because I just would feel so much better putting the bike together 
with all these fresh components knowing that that carburetor is clean. So I'm going to go the extra mile and pull the carburetor. Then I'll go back to getting that top end off. And there, just like magic, she's all disconnected. Now, at this point, I could just pull the engine because I have everything out. Here's the swing arm bolt. That's the only thing holding it in right now. Uh, I do need to disconnect the oil hoses down here. All right, <clears throat> got my cams out. I'm stuck because this head, this thing looks cherry. If I could just get it to focus, I'll prove it to you how cherry it is. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Look at those cam journals. Look at those. Just some grease. But not even a scratch in those things. I swear to God, that's just me wiping it and making it worse. But there's nothing in these cam journals. This thing's, this thing's in sweet condition. Alright guys, but from here, I'm going to take out these four bolts. One right there. One. Two. And then three take those out and then we're going to take off these 10 millimeter bolts right here so we've got two of those I've already loosened my timing chain tensioner yours will be a little bit different yours will have a little 10 millimeter nut on the outside and then you've got to stick a very skinny screwdriver very skinny flathead screwdriver up inside uh, turn it right right's going to um, draw in the piston for the timing chain tensioner and then you're going to tighten it as hard as you can and it should stick now hold it in place so you can get your cams loose. Uh, there's four bolts on the exhaust cam, six on the intake cam, and uh, yeah, my cams, man, they look great too. Holy crap, this thing, this bike was running efficient, boy. There's like no scarring or anything weird. Uh, black spots, just oil. But man, this thing's just killer condition. No egging on the cams. The coating's good. So I'm stoked. This motor is gonna be, this motor is gonna be badass. So I'm gonna take down the top end and take off those top four bolts I was telling you about up there. Those two cylinder head will pull off, and then you take out that eight millimeter down there. That's a cylinder, and then I'll be able to get the uh, bottom end out. Woohoo! And just like that, it's out. See how fast I work? Isn't that like amazing? So, she's all out. I mean, uh, condition of the piston, I mean, it just looks like a, like a high hour engine if I've ever seen one before. But, you know, all things considered, like everything looks like it always got good oil and it got, you know, oil changed in time. You'll see a lot of burnt oil and black oil stains on things if they get too, too hot with old oil. But, um, so now I'm going to split the cases and uh, just keep the ball rolling here. I mean, it's not a ton of work, but it won't seem like to you because I'm doing it all fast. So. Anyway, 
Okay, so I got the uh, engine on the side of the stand here, and um, uh, yeah, so you got to take off Kickstarter and then take off all these eight millimeter bolts. I go on, not on the clutch, but just on the outside, all the way. They go all the way around. Take that off. We're gonna pull that case off, and then when we get inside there, we're gonna have to take off the clutch basket. We're gonna have to take off the uh, um, the crankshaft nut, the countershaft nut, so we can split the cases. Actually, don't have to take off the clutch to split the cases; just makes it easier. And then get in there and replace all the bearings. So I'll get you up to speed. When all right. So skip ahead a lot. Sorry, my camera actually ran out of batteries. Um, there's the old case and the old bearings and everything and it wasn't until I pulled it apart that this back corner broke off I think it was all part of when the chain got caught in here and broke all that it just jammed up everything and knocked out the back of the case luckily the corresponding case is fine that's all good nothing cracked and then we got our new case over here with all brand new bearings and I went ahead and put all the brand new bearings in this one crank got a uh, new crank new um, counter shaft bearings main bearings transmission bearings new piston OEM and then I got this other case now and I'm just I just finished putting Loctite in all these uh, keepers and um, use Loctite Red, of course. You don't want those things backing out. So now I'm just uh, about to put some. Um, where's my sealer? Hey, honey, not right now. Uh, where's my sealer? I'm all scrambled. My camera died, so I had to go put it on the charger for a bit. But I use a Permatex Moto Seal. I'm going to take it off. I use Permatex Moto Seal. And I moved it because it was hard at the tip and I had to um, uncrust it, if you know what I mean. You can't find it. But it's called Moto Seal, M O T O S E A L. It's very popular, in the, uh, especially in any time that you need a, um, a center case bonded instead of a gasket. A just about every engine these days, the center cases are, are bonded. And not gasket. So, anyways, gonna put this thing back together, get the the new case on there, uh, bond the two cases together, and then get it in the bottom end of the bike, and then start building up the top end from there. So we're on the uh, we're definitely on the easy, nice, slow up uphill part of the of the build. It's bothering me now. I can't find that damn Permatex. Oh. Oh well. But here we go. Okay, well I got the motor somewhat resembling a motor again. Uh, had to wait for some gaskets to come in. But uh, she's ready to put back in there. I'm going to get the clutch cover on, get on the uh, counterbalance gear, get that timed, and put it up in there. I uh, set the cylinder aside because I want to uh, scotch bride it. And I'll show you a little... Uh, tip to do with that because you don't want to hone these cylinders they're just they're too delicate with their coating but um, yeah I'm gonna start getting this thing back in there and hopefully get this pig started today woo woo right. well at this point it's all just assembly work um, some main components when you're assembling what you want to make sure of is that you use the correct assembly Loctites and Loctite grease um, at every point of the motor. Definitely follow your instructions on your um, on your manual that you got with the bike. And I would say, over the hundreds of engines that I've assembled over the years, the thing that I find to be the most key, uh, aside from using the right Loctites and greases on assembly, is torque specs. <clears throat> it is definitely worth it to get yourself a good torque wrench. Um, every single bolt on this motor, I don't care if it's an outside case bolt, this little bolt that holds in the clutch actuator arm, every single bolt on these motors has a torque spec. 
uh, and you're not supposed to over tighten it or under tighten it. Um, the over tightening obviously will mean that uh, there will be an excessive drag on a certain component. Um, and then under torquing, you can lose the bolt, a gasket can fail, a lot can happen. And uh, for that reason, I, I, I'm on Facebook Live right now. Hello to my viewers on Facebook Live. And I was going to answer a couple questions here. First one. Let's pick... Mike Captura. Hope I'm saying that right. Mike asks, uh, I recently built an engine with my dad and we lost one of the pin, pin barrels for aligning the cylinder head. We still had one anyway and went on assembling. Is this okay? Uh, thanks for your question, Mike. Um, first and foremost, these, he's talking about these um, alignment barrels that come inside. Uh, they're basically, they're all over the engine. They're in the center cases, they're on the outside cover here, and they're usually designated by, they have a larger hole uh, this is what they look like. They're just uh, a sleeve. And I think actually when you order them, that's how they're labeled as a sleeve. And these sleeves, the where, where these things come in in um, necessity is for aligning gaskets. Uh, a lot of times these gaskets are machine pressed die cut gaskets. And the die cut gaskets themselves don't always locate properly when you're assembling an engine. So you use these uh, sleeves to help you lo locate the gaskets and it keeps them from moving when the engine's running and it also aligns the prod so like in this case with the uh, the flywheel cover here when I put this onto the engine if I don't have one of those sleeves this can be cockeyed just I mean a little bit in a leak oil. So, Mike, to answer your question on um, if you were missing one of the pin barrels, uh, there's usually two for a cylinder. Is it okay? Uh, I'm assuming that the bike runs fine right now. Uh, when you're missing one, it still allows the cylinder to articulate in one direction or the other. The reason why there's two is it'll keep it from twisting aft like this and then also forward and back. So, so even though you have one direction covered, it still can twist the other way when heat, vibration, uh, you could get a gasket failure in there. And then the other thing is too, you can prematurely wear your piston out because your piston is going to be pushing harder against one side of the cylinder than it is the other side. So the pin barrels are absolutely necessity. It's something that if you're assembling an engine and you've already spent a lot of money putting these things back together, it is absolutely worth it to wait a couple days, get on to RockyMountainATVMC.com, BTOMotorsports.com, and order yourself uh, a pin uh, sleeve, even if it means you're going to miss a race that weekend. It's, uh, to me, it's, they're a dollar seventy something to, you know, $2.15, and it's the damage that it can cause by not having them is way worse than than you know waiting an extra two three days and then being able to ride so absolutely thank you mike for your question let me go through this anymore and 450s okay so this question comes from jake martabello uh, jake asks if it is every time that a crf 450r needs its valves replaced do you have to Oh, to um, remand the valve, the to um, yeah, to surface. So um, I would say for a uh, for an amateur engine builder, someone that's uh, doing it themselves, maybe you don't have access to a machine shop. What he's talking about is every time you replace a valve inside the head, there's three distinct angles that a machinist would cut into the valve seats. And uh, I know for sure that you're not supposed to use any valve lapping compound like you would in an automotive application. Motorcycles usually, uh, the, the valves that we're dealing with, the titanium valves, coated valves of that sort, it's actually worse if you use any lapping compound and then you lap in the valves to the new valve seats. And what it does is it makes a perfect seal between the valve 
and um, the valve seat. Now it's better, it is the right way to send out your head with the valves to a respective machinist that has that perfect cutter and he'll put a new three angles in it and he needs your, your new valve or your old valve to find and locate the valve seat. Um, and then that's a proper way to do it. Um, as far as, uh, I would say, uh, if you can see three distinct angles on your valve seat, then you're probably okay just uh, getting after it with um, just some cleaner and a rag, you know, um, getting any surface corrosion off of there. I wouldn't use any abrasives, like no scotch Brite or anything like that to, um, to rough the surface because you, you can't do it evenly like that. Um, definitely stay away from lapping compounds and, um, and especially on a new valve, there's just, these things are treated and they have coatings on them and that would just ruin the valve. So don't do that. Um, obviously automotive is a different subject. So anyways, thanks for the questions guys. I'm going to get back to this motor and I need to get this thing back in the, in the thing. So we'll see ya. Okay, one other thing I want to talk about real quick is gasket prep uh, and surface prep. Um, this is the bottom of the cylinder head here. Um, a thousand and one stories can be told by just the bottom of the cylinder itself. Uh, the cylinder head, shall I say. Um, the gasket will always leave some sort of residue on it. And you can't just put this back on like this. Um, it's obviously to this thing, to me it had a, a ring leak, there's a lot of burnt oil, so the new piston kit in there is going to help out a bunch. Uh, and then you could also look inside the intake runners on both the exhaust and on the intake, and then you can see if there's uh, any oil that's burnt around the valve stems, and that will also tell you to, ch to change the valve stem seals. Now, I am going to change the valve stem seals in this because I do also need to clean the bottom of the cylinder head. So the bottom of the cylinder head I'll show you the after and then I'll also do it to the top of the cylinder so when we put it in our new gasket we got a good purchase between the two uh, pieces of metal on the new gasket so we don't have any chance of uh, having a head gasket seal leak or anything so what I recommend is um, WD-40 is real good um, and then uh, use uh, green scotch Brite. Uh, you can use something softer but you have to kind of start pushing in it pretty hard so I uh, say go with your green scotch Brite, um, get it wet with water, soap and water, scrub it, and, and then WD-40 afterwards. And then, um, you know, the WD-40 is a good cutter. It's going to cut any solvents or anything else that's left on it. Um, you know, and then blow it off with compressed air, rag dry it uh, until it's pretty much dry. So then uh, I'll show you the bottom of the cylinder head in just a second, but I just wanted to show you what I'm using, and it works great. Okay, so we got cylinder head on, and it's looking beautiful in there. Uh, from this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I have just uh, pre-measured out some, um, this is uh, Dello 400. Uh, this is oil I like to use for breaking, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some oil right up on top of this the valve buckets um, because when you first start these things up it actually takes a while to pump the oil up top so I like to make sure ample amount of oil is up top before we even go to fire this thing um, just to really save it from uh, any damage I'm sorry I'm not even showing you anything um, but yeah I just kinda got the the runners all wet with oil on the top right here and then we're going to set our cam in here and then um, uh, torque the head studs and uh, on the head studs you want to not use oil but use um, I got some anti-seas here just aluminum anti-seas um, and then torque your head to the manufacturer uh, recommendation and then um, you know same with the cam caps get your timing going and I'll get you caught up at that point and we should be able to fire this thing real soon. Alright, 
<clears throat> well, a couple days later, it's done. And no, that's not it behind me because that's a Cannondale. I'm going to be doing a video on replacing that one's water pump, but I mean the Yamaha. It's done. And uh, it came out really good. I'm really stoked. Let's go take a look. Here we go. Here it is. All back together. Oil in it. Um, do a little 360. But yeah, just going to put this thing up for quick sale. Even though I have way more money into it than it's worth, you know, I'm going to put it up for like a thousand bucks. Because it's an 05, I don't have the title. But I know the I know the paperwork and I know where it's at. And um, it's not, you know, hot or anything. But just something to play with, fix, make a project out of. But let's go for first fire. You want to videotape me? On what? Hold it. On the motorcycle. Okay. You got to yeah, aim it up, man. Runs awesome. Cool deal. Very cool. that's going to wrap up another build here at London MX. I thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions about rebuilding your that one's um 03 to 05 by design um those are all very similar. They all had the four speed transmission, same basic engine. The real changes were in the suspension. It got the first version of the closed cartridge uh fork which later became the triple S which is like an industry changer when it came to suspension. So it's really, really good suspension on that year. Um, you know, there's nothing bad I could say about them other than the four-speed transmission. Some people love them, some people hate them. But either way, they're great bikes, and they last a really long time, especially if you take care of them. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for me today here at the shop, garage, whatever. And uh, please like, you know, comment if you have any questions. Please subscribe. Um, I'm really trying to buckle down and get some of these videos made and um, um, just I, in between work and Supercross right now I'm just really trying to pump as much work out as possible I got a hot rod living on my own block anyway uh, again please subscribe like uh, and then check out my other videos you know um, you might see something there that's going to help you with the project that you have but um, I'm going to be doing a project here real soon. We're going to custom make our own dirt bike. Just use lots of different parts from other bikes and just make some beater out of it and just have fun with it. But uh, stay tuned. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.